the, the Lord is a, a faithful. I, I believe, uh, you know, this morning that uh, the Holy Spirit has given me uh, something to uh, share with this church and uh, all through the, the morning and the, the prayers that were prayed for the worship and what I've seen. Uh, you know, I, I believe it is relevant. And I've simply entitled this, Give Me This Mountain. And uh, I, myself, back in the spring, was doing a, a study with our church in Letterkenny on the book of uh, Joshua, and uh, I found it to be a, a great encouragement thinking of, you know, Joshua being a type of Jesus, and uh, I saw Caleb and uh, what a guy he was, and I'm going to be touching on uh, some of his story uh, here this morning. Uh, greetings indeed from the, the church in Letterkenny. I was talking to uh, our contact and Pastor Mike last night, and as Pastor John was saying, he's served faithfully 75 years old now. Uh, he came to the Irish nation about 40-something years ago set into uh, the Republic of Ireland, and uh, he says himself there was no born-again Christians amongst the Roman Catholic uh, community, and uh, they prayed for seven full years uh, waiting on the Lord. They used to take, well, it took a season, 10 days of prayer, two or three times a year. He says when he started to pray, it felt like, you know, the heavens were just, you could feel the warfare, and uh, as they would wait in the presence of the Lord, by the fourth or fifth day, you could feel the, the breakthrough coming. And after that, he says, you know, we lingered uh, in the presence of the Lord. Seven full years of then st stepping out and up to outreach on the streets until they saw the first convert from a Roman Catholic background. So it didn't uh, come easy. I was contacting him last night and how the church was going. He's preached, well, he preached this morning in Letter Kenny, and he says, it's been a good week. He says there was a young girl, she came in to the church this week and gave her heart to the Lord. And he says a 75-year-old man in a town called Moville gave his life to Jesus. He says it's been a good week. So, you know, this is amazing. But what gets me is the heart of the man. You know, in the heart of individuals, you know, who truly love Jesus. And as the years pass, there's, you know, they keep this zeal, as it were, for the Lord. And, uh, you know, I've met individuals as they've walked on with the Lord. They've lost something. And there's been a coldness that steps in or a complacency that starts to eat away or erode at their faith. And the challenge for us all is to keep, uh, as it were, on fire for Jesus, to stay hungry to, for God to use our lives. So I'm going to pray as uh, I turn to the Word. Holy Spirit, I thank you that uh, your presence is here with me this morning, with us all, Jesus. And Lord, I'm only a voice. And Lord, I humbly bow and ask you for an anointing from heaven in the name of Jesus. Lord, my words will fall to the ground, but your words remain. And I pray, Lord, you bless every ear that hears, and that your anointing, Lord, will be upon this service. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Amen. Now, I came across something that I just want to start with, and uh, I don't know where I picked it up, but it's, I, I thought it was, uh, it's, I'll just read it. It's called Quitters, Campers, and Climbers. And uh, the picture is, as I entitled this sermon, Give Me This Mountain, and uh, it shows where, the, you know, where different people get to in a sense of uh, climbing a mountain. And uh, it says, quitters see a mountain and give up. These are people who face life's adversities. And they opt out, they cop out, they back out, and drop out. They see the mountain and abandon the climb. They abandon their dreams and take the easier path. They use the language of limitation, words like can't, won't, impossible, and phrases like, we've always done it that way. Or it's not fair, or, that'll not work. Or, I'm too young, too old, too fat, too skinny, too tall, too short too weak, too male, too female, too Irish, too American, too Canadian, whatever it is. We always have this type of person, always has an excuse. And then there's the, the campers, they're the, the second group. They see a mountain and they settle down. To this person, everything now is just fine. These people start the climb, but they become weary and look for a smooth, comfortable plateau on which to avoid adversity. They focus their energy on filling their tents with material goods, settle into a convenient and comfortable lifestyle, they usually have decent jobs and good pay and benefits. However, their days of excitement, their learning, their growth and creativity are long gone. And by waiting out the storm, they wait out life and succumb to the gravitational pull of the campground. Everything to this person now is just, as it were, stagnant. Just settled down. They're not the individuals that quit, but the, the people that have lost the hunger. And this is really what, I, what I'm going to be coming into in the Word this morning, <clears throat> is this passion. This desire, I heard someone once said, it used to be amazing grace, but to the camper now, as it were, it's just grace. There once was a time when there was a burden in the heart for the lost, but now they're just lost, as it were. There was a time when you were called to seek the Lord and pray, but now, you know, it's just another prayer meeting happening down there in the church, and something sort of washes over our heads, or announcements are made about 
signing up for activities or service, or, and it just sort of passes us by. And, and then there's a third type, and they're the climbers, and they see a mountain and grab their gear. And regardless of their background or disadvantages or misfortune, these people continue the ascent. They refuse to allow age, gender, race, physical or mental disability or any kind of obstacle to get in their way. To climbers, the, that campground is only a base camp, but to the campers, unfortunately, it's home. They use the language of do right and do your best. Let's see it happen. And they speak of possibility and challenge and things as they can be. And I want to say God has called us all to be climbers. That's, that's, I, don't even, I just I picked that up somewhere. You know, it's, it's not from the Word, so forgive me for, for using it as a word. But it, it speaks to the, the challenge that comes to each and every one of us. And I think the greatest danger for myself and my walk with the Lord is to settle into the ground of being the camper. I'm not the quitter. I'm not the individual that has given up, as it were. But I could settle down very nice. And even as a church back in Letterkenny, I could settle down very nice now. I've seen it coming to, as our pastor here was sharing, and praise God for it. 200-something people gathering in on a Sunday morning. And it's, it's phenomenal what God is doing in our nation, as I'm sure Pastor Nick would agree as well, and you know what, what he's doing in, in, in the land. But the danger is that we, we settle down in, in the midst of it all. In Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 17, you, you don't have to turn there. God speaks and he says, remember what Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt, how he met you on the way. He attacked your rear ranks and all the stragglers at your rear. And when you were tired and weary, he, he, he did not fear God. As where the enemy struck hard in those individuals that were drifting behind. You know what a straggler is? There's always one in the family. Sometimes my wife accuses me of being the straggler, especially when she needs a bit of help with the boys. But it's this idea that you, you look around and there he is way back there. And I speak to you and I, I tell you this morning, the enemy is looking for any foothold, any opportunity as it were, to get a heart now that has lost its zeal for the Lord. You no longer feel as it were a burden in your heart for your nation. You no longer feel this, uh, this draw to seek after the presence as it were of the Lord. I was thinking just as I was looking, reading over these notes again and last night, and there's a verse in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12, and I know there's people of various interpretation of it, but Jesus says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, he says, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and he says, violent people have been reading it, and you know, it can mean persecution, but I think there's something more. I believe it's talking also about individuals that hunger and thirst after the blessing and the anointing of God who are individuals that cry in their hearts this morning, Lord, give me as it were the mountain. Lord, take my life and use it for your glory. You know, I heard this phrase, and I don't know who quoted it years ago, but one life to live will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only what's done for Jesus. When it's all over, I'm 43 years of age now. I gave my life to the Lord when I was a 14-year-old boy. And you know what? Jesus has taken me on a great journey. But I know as I see, as where the years ticking by and our son's getting old, older, teenagers now, I think to myself, how quickly, as it were, 10 years goes, how quickly 15 years goes. We were looking at pictures last night of Tori and you know, my son Andrew, and we're just like this back in Ireland, and now, as it were, they've, they've grown up. But again, it's just coming back to me time and time again. It's, it's passing by. I don't know when Jesus is going to come back. I have family members that don't know the Lord, and I still have a burden. I pray for them. But sometimes I do get discouraged, I have to be honest, and uh, I stop praying for them. And I kind of get into this place where I sort of think that, you know, well, I'm a Christian, and just they're not. They just don't know the Lord. And, and then God revives something in me. And He asked me, when was the last time, even in my heart, that I shed a tear for my father? my own father who's 76 years of age and doesn't know the Lord and I have to come back and say, Lord, yes, help me, Jesus. Give me a burden again, as it were, for my, my father and my mother and my family members and this town to which, God, you've called me to be a light in, as it were, and now you've called me to be a pastor. And God, give me this burden again from your Holy Spirit, as it were. I think of Jacob, this guy who wrestled all night and he says, I wouldn't, I'm not going to give up, Lord, until you bless me. And you know the story. God changes him from, as it were, Jacob, and he gives him the name 
Israel. And I think of the widow who pleads, well, Jesus tells a story of her, the parable. She, she comes to the, the judge, the unrighteous judge, and she pleads. And she cries as were for justice. The man that goes to his friend's house for bread, Jesus tells these stories. And he tells us, you know, in that paragraph in the book of Matthew, he goes on to speak that how much more will the Father give the Spirit to those that ask? There's an asking that's required. There's a hunger that needs to be there. There must be a desire in the Spirit. Jesus, change me, Lord. Jesus, give me this mountain. Whatever your situation, as it were, is this morning. I think of, I was, I'm reading the book of uh, Hudson Taylor, and uh, I, was, I was touched. It, it says that he's, you know, he, he went into church. You see, you can be in church and, and not in Christ. He was brought up in a Christian home, but he hadn't at this stage. He was only himself, maybe 17, 18. Hadn't given his life to Jesus, and his sister was quite close to him. She was 13. Her name was Amelia. And she said to, she determined in her heart that three times a day, until he gives his heart to the Lord, she was going to pray that Hudson would come to know Jesus. Talks about his mom. She was away on holidays and said she was 80 miles away and she had an afternoon and the Lord put a burden on her heart, her heart for her son Hudson. And she said she went into her room and she waited. And the hours lingered away. She waited in the presence of the Lord until she knew there was a moment. She knew that victory had come. And at that time, you know, Hudson Taylor, he gives his side. He says, little did, well, my, her, his mother knew it by faith and, or God had revealed it to her in the spirit. But he'd gone into a barn, and he says uh, he liked to read, you know, the stories and the tracts, but not the, the actual gospel message. But this day he was reading the gospel message. And at this moment, he had a revelation that all, as it were, all the price was paid at Calvary. And at that moment, he surrendered his heart to the Lord. So his mother was in a room, crying, as it were, before the Lord in victory. And he says he was in a barn at that moment, giving his heart to Jesus. I want to say to you, there is power in prayer. It's real. God is real. Hallelujah. I remember as a, you know, a young boy, probably about 16, and you know, if you know Pastor Mike uh, McBride, he's just a, he's, he's built his ministry. He knew no other way. There was no other Christians around at this time, and he'd, he'd seek the Lord, and he, he served under Duncan Campbell, who was a revivalist in the Hebrides, and, but he always has this burden uh, to seek as a word of the Lord, and I remember I'd been out of work for a little while, and he would challenge me. He would say, Trevor, use your time. As a young man, he was saying, and learn to seek the Lord. He would say, take 20 minutes, read the Word. Take another 20 minutes, pray. Maybe 20 minutes reading the Word and take a break. And then get back in again. And you know what? I started to do it. But you know, what came next was these nightmares that started to come into my life. And it was the time of the first Gulf War. And I remember these, I would go to sleep at night and this terrible dreams, would, and I'd wake up as it were in a, and I knew there was something spiritual that was uh, with it. And in this voice, whether it was my voice of reason or a voice from the enemy, spoke to me. and says, Trevor, if you, if you would just stop seeking the face of the Lord, then you'll have rest. And I knew at this moment, the opportunity was there, as it were, to, to, to quit or to settle into the camping grounds. And I was only, as I say, possibly 16 or so at the time, and I, I came forward in a service like this. And the elders at the time, they just prayed with me. And they told me, they says, listen, it's just an attack from the enemy. And when it happens again, I think it was Pastor Mike said to me, when it happens again, he says, you just rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. He says, that's it. <laughs> well, it happened again. And I did rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ, but it taught me something. He said, when you want gold, hallelujah, it's going to cost us something. There's going to be, I praise God for Calvary. I think, you know, I'm not preaching a works gospel here this morning, but Paul says, I fought the good fight. He says, I didn't sleep the sleep, as it were. I didn't rest. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have pressed in after God. I have desired only one thing, Paul says, and that is to love the Lord and to serve Him. And, and he did that. I want you to turn in your, your Bibles, if you have them there, to Joshua chapter 14. I'm just going to read a little passage here. Joshua chapter 14, it says, Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal. They were all getting their land distributed. And it says, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, 
You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Now, you know, I, I was, as I was studying, as I say, in the springtime and going through the book of Joshua, often the names you go looking, and I was thinking, Caleb's name, it must be an awesome name, probably something like Warrior, or I, I'm not quite sure. And I went in, and I was looking in my references, and it says, dog, or one who is raging with uh, canine madness. <laughs> That's what I was saying. And I was thinking to myself, do you know what? There's, he was crazy, in a sense, in a good way. There was something about, in a nice way I say this, there's something good for being crazy for Jesus. There's something that takes a person a little bit beyond their comfort zone. The danger for us all is we settle into this middle class to upper class sort of Christianity. And we lose the desire, as it were, and the hunger and the passion for Jesus. And I thought of this man, Caleb, as, as we're going to see, 80-something years of age, crying, give me the hill country, as it were. And, you know, my mind thought of Peter. He was another crazy dude. You know, I was, my mind was thinking, here he is in a boat. Jesus is walking alongside out in the lake. And what does he say? He says, call, Jesus, as it were, call me to come forth to yourself. And he steps out of the boat. And I can hear the voice of all the quitters at this time speaking, saying, Peter, you're crazy. You're going to sink. Do you ever get these voices? When you want to do something for Jesus, I call them the, the bubble bursters. There's always a voice. There's always, because some people get uncomfortable when you want to get a little bit crazy for Jesus. And they always want to just put you back into a little box, but refuse to allow them. Dream big dreams for God. God is not finished, hallelujah, in this church. God is not finished in my church back in Letter Kenny. God is not finished, hallelujah, in my family. God is going to do, he, well, Paul writes it, he says, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or even think, hallelujah. Don't limit almighty God's. And here is this, this Caleb character. I would love to have spent a little time with Caleb. You know, I, I just, I love those sort of characters. A bit Irish, maybe it's the Irish blood. <laughs> but while they're <laughs> sort of, you know, in a place of you just go for it, have a, have a go. You know, we, it, is, it is a crazy walk. You know, myself too, the Lord called me to be a pastor. And I felt, as that lady was sharing, very unqualified for the calling. But you know what? It's really, at the end of the day, it's very little about me. It's all about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's, that's just the truth of it. Don't limit, as it were, almighty God. Learn to live. Learn to dream again. Have you lost your dreams for Jesus, as it were? Are you in this place now that everything's just somber and sad and always problems? You ever be around people like us? All they ever want to do now is talk about problems after problems after problems. If you think, and you know, as we go through here, and Caleb, 40 years in the wilderness, only him and Joshua of that generation, everyone else above 20, perished in the desert. Such a lot of graves and death and opportunity to allow bitterness and unbelief to settle in. And yet inside this as it were, this mad dog inside this individual that was, as it were, just nutty for Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe there was, there was joy and, a, and faith, and a, as it were, a, a smile upon his face. He's a man of the word. Verse 6, you know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. We need to be people of the word. Someone said, get into the Word until the Word gets into you. Read the pages of Scripture. Meditate on the Word of the Lord. You know, Joshua in chapter 1, you know, the Lord speaks to him and tells him to be very strong and courageous. And he, and he tells him, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Meditate 
on the pages of Scripture. It still has power in it. Hallelujah. This is the sword. This is, this is the, the power of God, I tell you, on the pages, as it were, of, 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 of these sheets. And it is a power to change our lives. Not only is a man of the Word, he's a man of conviction. Verse 7, he says it, he says, I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. This man had grit, he had iron, and there was integrity inside him. And if you want to do things for Jesus, you need that, you know, from the Holy Spirit, that ability to walk and to be true to what you are. How often have we not backed off from opportunities to share the words with people out there in the community? How often do we not shy away and take the easier route? It's the quitters again. And maybe the campers now, you just, you're happy to sit in the place and say, I'll just pray and thank God for prayer and I'll let the others tell folks about Jesus. No! Use your testimony. Let God use your life, brothers and sisters. He's a man devoted unto the Lord. Verse 8, Nevertheless, my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. How sad. Oh, the power of this, this tongue when it's, when it's so full of unbelief. I'll, I'll just read out the reference and numbers from, for where this came from. But he says, I wholly followed the Lord my God. He was committed. He was devoted to the Lord. And I speak to you in the spirit of this message this morning. And I ask you, is Jesus now in a box, as it were, in your life? Sometimes I picture it and I think, I at times want to put Jesus into this compartment. I have my life. And if Jesus comes, as it were, and puts his rubber stamp on it, that'll do, that's great. But if he doesn't, I can still, as it were, get on with what I want to do. But that's not what it's about when you give your life to Jesus. Not only is he your savior, but he asks and he demands to be your Lord. So that when he says, go, you go. When he says, be quiet, you be quiet. When he says, speak, you speak. When he says, obey me, you obey me. And this is what it is to be devoted, as it were, unto the Lord. Lord Jesus, it is no longer my life, my ways, my plans. It's your plans, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is your church, Jesus. This is your work, Lord, and we want the blessing of you upon it. We want you to be Lord, Jesus. In Numbers chapter 13, it talks about the people. You know, they, they, made the, they came back with the, the terrible report. In Numbers chapter 13, in verse 30, it says, Caleb, he quieted the people before God and says, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. This is the spirit of Caleb and Joshua. They believed that God could do anything. Hallelujah. But the men who had gone up with him said, We're not able to go up against the people. Why? For they're stronger with us. The quitters. It'll never happen. The Lord will never bless you. The Lord, oh, you the enemy, you've got growth. This is it. This is the end of it. Who says that? All things are possible. I don't know what God has in the future, but don't put God in a box. Don't limit him anymore. Verse 32 of that passage in Numbers 13, and then they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, which they had spied out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature, and we saw the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Who are you listening to? I was reading us. And I was thinking, you know, the, the voices that you know, we allow to get into our ears. And how it changes our perspectives. They saw the giants as it were, these large men, and, and they saw themselves as little grasshoppers. But Joshua and Caleb, they didn't measure as it were themselves to these giants. They saw an almighty God. And he is king. And hallelujah, he is Lord, and he reigns, and he is supreme. Isaiah says, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his glory fills the temple. Oh, friends, 
Are you in a trial this morning? What difficulty is it that you're facing? Perhaps it's financial. Perhaps it is your marriage. Perhaps it is your health, as all has been mentioned here already. I don't know what you face, but I want to say to you, take your eyes, as it were, off your trial and put your eyes upon the Lord. Amen. You've got to. There is no other choice. Sometimes the Lord puts us into situations that absolutely breaks us. You know, I, you know my testimony. I've shared it here of this beautiful little boy. He's out there somewhere now. But, you know, when he was born, born with these profound special needs, and they told us at the time he may never walk, he may never talk. And, you know, you're faced with this. And I was a pastor and three other sons. And, and all of a sudden, everything seemed, it was like someone just posed, as it were, the, the carpet from under you. And everything, now, you're, <clears throat> now your faith has really been put to the test. Can you keep, you know, I had people come and, <clears throat> excuse me, and he says, I said to my wife, oh, don't give up on God. She says, how can I give up on God? And when I need him now, is it worth the most? He is faithful. I don't understand the ways of the Lord, but I know that he understands. And I don't know why God heals one person and someone else God chooses to take through to glory. I don't understand these things, but I know that he knows and he's in control, and he's faithful, and he's almighty, and he's with me, and he's with you, and he's greater than the powers of darkness, and he's greater than your trial, and he's greater than your lack of faith, as it were. He is almighty God. You know, and even when I preach a sermon like this, it doesn't mean, oh, we just do it, and it's, it's all perfect. I was thinking last night of Stephen. You can read it yourself in the Acts chapter 7. And he ends up, he's been martyred for Jesus. What does he say? At the very end, he says, you know, I see the heavens opened. I see the Father, and I see Jesus. And the right hand is aware of the Father, and I see glory. And I ask you, even in the midst of your, perhaps it's greatest trial that you're going to face, where are you setting your eyes? And if I, as a little Irish man, could come in here this morning, it's really to exhort you, set your eyes upon Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Hallelujah. He is with you. He will never leave you. This has to go from being a theory into something that settles within our hearts. He wants us to bring us to a place where we have peace, as it were, even in the midst of our storms. You know, I was, the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. I seen, I was sitting one morning with my younger son, and there was a, a, a news report on, and it talked about the uh, Hubble spacecraft. I thought it was amazing. They said that she's out there, as you know, flying around somewhere. <laughs> and it says that it stared at a little bit of space. It says the size of a grain of rice, you know, if you held it out in your hand. So it's something so small just sitting in the size of your hand. And the report was this, is that the scientists, you know, as they first set out that spacecraft, she said, they said there was nothing there. But they set her there for 10 days to examine and look upon that little bit of space. And they say that they saw something like 3,000 galaxies out there. The heavens declare the glory of God. There is a creator. Do not limit God to a little box even this morning. But see him and he asks you even. Again, what is it that you need him to do. Where is it this morning that you need the victory? Are you a quitter? Are you the individual now, I think it's more sinister, is the camper and you've settled down? Or are you the person, as a, where the, the climber, who says, I'm going to press through, hallelujah, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Just to read on here, I know the time is going. It says, Moses, well, verse 9 again, so Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am, this day, 85 years old. As yet I am as strong as this day, as on the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war 
for going out and for coming. And what a spirit. What a man. You know, and I appreciate, as I say, the founding pastor of our church. Even last night, he said a lot to me in that short little sentence. Great time in the church. Young girl got saved. 75-year-old man gives his life to Jesus. That's all he could speak about. 75 years of age. Not about the weather. <laughs> Not about as it were, the crowd or whatever is happening in the church. It's just something rang in the spirit of him. He says, this is, this is gold. This is what it's about. It's about the lost. It's about seeing them come to know Jesus. This is what it's about, friends. Hallelujah. And his strength was for war. And I ask you this morning, has the hunger for war gone now? Again, are you the individual? Or passiveness has set in. Jesus talks about it, even to the church, the book of Revelation. So, so look warmness. You know, a place where first love can be lost. Everything's grand. You know, my wife used to say to me, she's not here now, so I can say it. <laughs> she's talking about her marriage. How do you think her marriage is going grand? That's maybe it's a man thing, maybe it's now, I don't know. I was grand. She wasn't. <laughs> you know, there was so, something needed to be resolved or talked through. And, but I was grand. And she says to me, I'm going to put that in your tombstone. Everything's grand. You know, I thought, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, you know, in my mind, I thought, isn't it true? But listen to me. It's not grand. You've got to hear it. The lost are still lost. Your neighbors who don't know Jesus... As of yet, if they, if they die today, they're going to hell. So it's not grand. It does matter what you do. It does matter the fact whether you will pray or you will not. It does matter whether you will read this word and let it change you and wash over you and change, as it were, the way that you see things, your perspective. It's not grand. It's a choice now to allow Jesus, as it were, to, to take you on to deeper water. Or you can be a Christian and you will go to heaven. You've given your life to the Lord. I'm not talking, you know, thank God he, he, the finished, as it were, the work at Calvary. This is not about, as I say, a works mentality. But nevertheless, it's about a heart that desires after the living God. Hallelujah. Jesus, stir up my heart. Give me, as it were, your heart. And he says, Therefore give me this mountain, of verse 12, of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And the Lord blessed him and gave him Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as the inheritance. And, you know, I, I think... Something, as I, I just, in my mind's eye, I believe that Joshua smiled. This was his buddy. He was there. He was, it was just Joshua and Caleb came back that day. And I know Joshua's the leader now. But I think something in the heart of this warrior smiled as he looked at Caleb and thought, he still has it inside him. There's still a hunger and passion. How sad it is to observe brothers or sisters that have now lost their heart for the Lord. As I say, everything's fine. It doesn't really matter now how I live. You know, and I was thinking as I was studying or reading in Joshua chapter 10, the type of this man also. He comes and he travels something like 26 miles to help the Gibeonites. And apparently it was in a three, to, uh, you know, 3,000 feet uh, height. So they traveled all night as an army to go and help the Gibeonites. And then they fight in the battlefield. And then Joshua, that military leader, knows tactically that if the night time comes, then the enemy it could swing, as it were, towards the enemy. So what does he do? He prays. And he says, son, stand still. And it says, that son, who asked for the Sunday stand still? Seriously. You're talking about it. <laughs> this is a different mind. This is not the mind of natural man. These are individuals that believe God answers prayer. Sun stands still. And it stood still, it says, for about a whole day. Now I think of the poor soldiers. If you think Pastor John drives you hard here, you've just marched all night, 26 miles, elevation. 
You're on the battlefield. And then he says, son, you stand still for one whole day. And the Lord answered their prayer. And they won a terrific victory. And I think on this hour, there's something resonates. Even to Joshua himself as he hears Caleb. Oh, you still have it. You still have that desire. You can read Joshua chapter 15. It says that from verse 13 to verse 19. I'll just pull out a little bit here. Verse 14, it says, Caleb drove out the three sons of Anak from there, Shishai, Ahiman, Talmai, the children of Anak. I would love to have seen that. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen a type of brave heart. I have this vision of this crazy old man. This wasn't, didn't look quite, you know, conservative. <laughs> We're just praying. You know, We're just settling in. I think he was coming up over the hill you know, as it were, just full of energy, 85, desire, and, you know, these three giants, they're just, <laughs> as it were, they're just running in front of him. But it, to see it and, you know, and to, to appreciate, hallelujah. James chapter 4 says this in verse 7, if we resist the devil, that roaring lion, he will flee. Praise the Lord. Praise Unfortunately, he's not destroyed, but he flees. And God allows us to pass through trials. And God allows you to pass through situations because He wants you to, as it were, mature in your faith. And He wants you to avail of the armor of God. And He wants you to renew your desire this morning. Count me in, Lord. I want to fight Jesus. I want to be a bit of like Caleb. Sign me up after church for some of those activities. Amen. <laughs> I heard one amen. Count me in at the prayer time. I have a family, and they need Jesus. And then Caleb, in closing, you know, he says, verse 16, he says, He who attacks Kirjath's Sephir and takes it to him, I will give my daughter as wife. You know, and I thought, he's a, he's a smart man. He knew. You see the desire of him? 85. He knew what it was to be around cold individuals. Death unbelief, constant murmuring, faith long since gone. So he's a loving father. And again, it wasn't just going to be grand. He sets it out. He says, you want to marry my daughter? Go win that city. He actually says, win it. He just doesn't say a target. He says, I will, he who attacks and takes it. It wasn't just enough to attack it. He wanted to be sure that his daughter God, a wonderful, powerful man of God. And I want to say in closing to parents here, as you've had a dedication even here this morning, again, it matters about your children. It matters that you have a voice in the house. Dad, the head of the home, it matters whether you're cold or warm in the Lord's. It matters if you will decide next week to bring them to service or not. It matters whether you will decide to put in the effort and bring them to youth ministry. All these things matter to the individual that wants to see their sons and daughters serving the Lord. It matters if you pray. Perhaps your children are in a situation at school or you know that they need a touch of God. Why don't you close your door? When was the last time? I don't speak this to, to, to beat. I speak it to myself as a dad too. Do you ever close the door? Do you ever cry out? Maybe it's been a long time, but something in your heart says, I need to get into that room. I can't sort this situation out. I don't have the answers, but I know that he does. And I know that if Joshua can tell the sun to stand still in the sky, and it happens, all things are possible in Christ Jesus. He will turn all things for good because it matters. Hallelujah. It matters if Letter Kenny, Christ, well, Letter Kenny goes to hell. It matters if my family are lost. It matters if I choose to love them or not. It matters when people look at my life. My testimony matters. D.L. Moody, 
He says that of every 100 people, he says, in his experience, he says, one of them reads the Bible, and the 99 others read the man or woman who reads the Bible. It matters where you were last night. It matters where you will be tonight and tomorrow. It matters in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It matters, Lord. It all matters. And it's all going to pass away, Lord. And I want to serve you, Jesus, with all of my heart, not just with a little part. It matters, Jesus, because you matter. And you gave your life for me, Jesus. Hallelujah. You matter, Lord. And I love you, Jesus. Oh, God, come. Hallelujah. Jesus, you matter. Praise the Lord. Decide this morning. You know, in the situation that you're facing, you know, have you got that heart that says, give me the mountain? Hallelujah. Maybe you came in here. And you were the quitter. For whatever reason, your own voice can be your worst enemy. Always telling yourself, I can never be anything in Christ. You are everything in Christ. He gave his precious life for you. A voice that says, God can never use me. Yes, he can. If he can use me, if he can use us, he can use you. He can. It's his power working through us. It's not our own. It matters. Jesus, come this morning. Lord, change us, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand as we close. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, just as we finish the word here, you know, I really feel, you know, the Lord is just calling individuals out of, as it were, a place of camping, complacency, maybe even quitting. Maybe you come in this morning and you say, I've had enough. I'm fed up with what's called churches. I've come in here for the first time and I want to see if there's something real. I pray you would have felt the presence of the Lord here in the worship and indeed in the word. He is real and he loves you. And he wants you to take you to places you never thought was humanly possible because it's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Maybe you're here this morning and Jesus has spoken to you. And I want to ask you, just come forward and decide in your heart now, Lord, it matters now. Lord, renew my love for you. Lord, put a passion back in my spirit again for you, Lord. Do something in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to hand it to you, Pastor John. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God, you. praise God. How many of you will say today, Jesus, the way I live matters, and God, let me fight over the mountains that stand Hallelujah. in front of me. Yes, How many believe God to do that today? Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Father God, I pray, Lord, for a faith to arise in your people. God, our faith is not in our faith. God, our faith is an arisen Savior. You are victorious. You have conquered every power, Lord, both in this world and in the world to come. I thank you, Lord, that you reign victorious. There is no other name like the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here today and you just say, Pastor, I'm here today and I know that the way that I've lived my life has been so faithless. And I need Jesus. I need God. With, with this pastor has talked about today, this fighting over mountain, there's so many things that I need to fight over, but I've, I've either quit or I've camped. And Jesus, today, I just need you to move in my life. If that's you, will you just raise your hand across this place? Praise God today. Listen, we don't want to quit. We don't want to camp. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, you see these hands today. And Lord, we stand in this place. And God, we ask you, God, we ask you in faith, God, forgive us, Jesus, for complacency. God, I pray, Lord, if there's anyone here that doesn't know you today, God, I pray as they cry out to you, Lord, that you would forgive them of their sins. And God, I pray that you would just today breathe the Holy Spirit, God, in them and through them. Lord, I pray today, God, Lord, that as everyone would turn, God, that doesn't know you today, I pray that you would do a supernatural work in their life, God, that they would be translated from darkness to light, and God, I pray for the ones that are here that, or they've known you, but they've just become very complacent, Jesus, today, restore that fire, 
God, restore that faith, God. Lord, today it's not by works. God, it's by a deep faith and a trust in you. And God, I pray today that you would rebirth this, rekindle this, God, in the hearts of men and women. And Lord, we will give you all of the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. Church, one last time, can you just put your hands together and give God glory today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God is good. Church, we love every one of you. I hope you know this. I thank God for what he's done. And you people are here. You, you may be here today and you go, I'm just new in this church. We love every one of you. And we're believing God to work in this city, in, in your lives, in your families. So if you want to sign up for a ministry, sign up for a ministry. But just let it be an act of faith in your heart. And get to that place where the fight goes back into your spiritual life again. The way you live, it matters. Amen.